Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and it is October 12th, exactly one day after the release of VMware vSphere 8 for download. So if you're like me, you can just hear the home labs churning right now, installing vSphere 8, upgrading to vSphere 8. In case you're wondering how to get started with vSphere 8, this video will have you covered. We're going to begin by installing vCenter Server 8 in the home lab environment. So let's dive right in. So the first thing that you're going to do is actually download the ISO image for your vCenter Server 8 appliance. And that ISO image is fairly large. It's around eight gigs. And so I have just simply downloaded this to my desktop, as you see here on the screen. So I'm going to mount this ISO and we're going to see a bunch of files, of course, as they exist on the ISO image. And we're going to double click into VCSA UI installer. Then Win32 is we're on a Windows platform. And then you're going to see installer.exe. So we're going to double click the installer and this will launch the vCenter server installer utility. Now, for those that have installed vCenter for the past several versions, this is going to look very similar. So vCenter Server 8 installer, the layout of the utility for installation is very similar. So we're simply just going to click the install. And again, similar, we get the introduction of the process from the installer itself. We're simply going to click next, going to accept the EULA vCenter server deployment target. Here is where you tell the vCenter server installer which ESXi host or vCenter server is actually going to house the VCSA 8 appliance. Because as we remember, the VCSA 8 appliance is simply a virtual machine. So it has to run in a virtual environment. So I'm going to give it the home lab vCenter server and we have our credentials populated. Click next. We're gonna get the certificate warning since it's a untrusted certificate. Click next. And we're going to select where we want to install if we have a specific folder in our vSphere inventory where we want the appliance to reside. I'm going to click Next. On the compute resource, we tell the vCenter server installer which host or cluster that we want to house our VCSA 8 installation. I'm going to pick this esx6.cloud.local. Now we name the VM for the VCSA 8 appliance. Again, it's a virtual machine. So how do we want this virtual machine to appear in our vSphere inventory? Set the root password. Now we select the deployment size. And for the deployment size, we have the options of tiny, small, medium, large, and extra large. And you can select the sizing from the drop-down menu. I'm simply going to select the tiny configuration. You can also select different from the default of the storage size. So you can pick a tiny deployment size, but you could configure an extra large storage size. So you can kind of mix and match those. We're going to leave that at default. Now we're going to select the data store that we want to house the VCSA appliance. I'm going to enable thin provisioning. For the network, we can select the distributed switch or standard switches that we have available to us. Now, if you're targeting a vCenter server, you will be able to select distributed switches. However, if you're targeting a standalone host and have logged in to that standalone host, you're only going to be able to target a standard switch. So keep that in mind. I want to select the network IP. We're going to leave it static. And for the FQDN, I've got VCSA 8.cloud.local. Now it's still best practice from everything I have seen and read to make sure you have this DNS record pre-populated. I always have done that with my VCSA appliances and have never had any issues doing that. And it seems to forego any issues from DNS resolution or uh, quirkiness that comes from the installer not seeing that proper DNS record out there. So we have everything configured, our network, host name, and we're going to leave everything else at the defaults. And as simple as that, we've made it to the very end of the installation stage one. So this stage just simply puts the shell VM for the VCSA 8 appliance in your inventory. Then in phase two, we will actually start 
more of that configuration to stand that VCSA appliance up properly. So let's click finish and let this phase one begin. As you see, phase one has completed. We have the, you have successfully deployed the vCenter server success message on the screen. So we are simply going to click the continue button to enter into phase two of the deployment process. As is noted on the first screen, the first stage has been completed. So we're now progressing into stage two, where we set up some of the other configuration parameters of vCenter server itself. First things first, we're going to synchronize with NTP servers. SSH access, I'm going to activate initially. On step three of phase two, we are configuring the SSO domain. Here, I'm going to configure this as vSphere.local, and we're going to click next. You can select if you want to join the customer improvement program. And finally, as quickly as that, we've made it to step number five, which is ready to complete. So we're simply going to click the finish button and we get the warning that we are not going to be able to pause or cancel the installation process once phase two begins. So it's an all or nothing process at this point. So we're simply going to click OK to accept that and let phase two begin installing and configuring. Well, in about 10 minutes for me, the stage two installation completed successfully. So at this point, we have a fully functional vCenter Server 8 VCSA appliance. And as you know, it automatically gives us the URL for our new VCSA 8 appliance. So let's click that. We were brought to the new vSphere client of VCSA 8. Let's launch the vSphere client. Log in with our SSO domain administrator. And we have the interface of our VCSA 8 appliance. And if you notice, it looks very similar to vSphere 7 Update 3 with some of those UI enhancements that were made with Update 3. So as you see, we've got our VCSA 8 appliance up and running. We've got the build version as 205.195.28. And again, the version is 8.0.0, so no service packs, no patches whatsoever in this build release. And this is an IA release, which is the new release model that VMware has come forward with. So we're going to get IA and then a GA designation in a few weeks. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this overview video of how to quickly stand up a new vCenter server vCSA appliance in your vSphere environment. This is the first step to delving into vSphere 8. You want to make sure that you have your vCenter server at version 8, and then you can manage everything from version 8 down through to legacy versions of VMware vSphere. And stay tuned, I'm going to build on this vCenter server deployment. We're going to add ESXi 8 hosts with an installation of that, as well as building out our cluster in vSphere 8. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.